Hi, welcome to this two-part uh, screencast on authentication and authorization. The first one will be on authorization or authentication and the uh, second one will be on authorization. Authentication is basically figuring out who someone is and making sure that they are who they say they are and authorization is uh, making sure that the specified user has access to a particular page. So that being said, we have a pretty much uh, blank Rails application here just with a few pages created. Uh, you'll see that we have a uh, welcome page here. Uh, we have an about us page, which everybody should have access to. And we have a private dashboard here, uh, which uh, should be secret unless you're logged in. Okay, uh, let's uh, go about this from uh, from uh, a, a new user standpoint, you're always going to want to register. So uh, let's uh, let's take a look at that first. Um, okay, Rails uh, G controller users. We're going to create a users controller to create a new user, and that's what we're going to use for registering. All right, run that. And now if we pop into our text editor, I'm going to use Vim, but feel free to use uh, whatever you like. All right, Here, that, that generator ran that for us. Uh, and we want a to create a new user. So we're going to do get. And let's just do, uh, let's actually just do the default. And we're going to specify only to specify that we only want new and create. Put a symbol there. have here for rake routes okay so we have the dashboard um, we have this is the routes that we just created uh, we can do a new user and we can create that user perfect okay so let's uh, add a link on our on our page on our index page Register and user new user path. Okay, great. We have a new user. Hit the register, we go to the new user page. Now we need a form on here in order to uh, make it do what we need it to do. Uh, so, before we do the form, we need to have a table in the database that we can save. Um, this user as so let's create that now rails uh, g model user and we're going to give it two attributes uh, email string and we want it to be unique and password digest Now you're looking at this and wondering why I'm pass doing password digest. Well, when we bounce over here to um, the API, there's this method has secure password. This is kind of a one-off uh, and it fits our perfect uh, or our needs perfectly for uh, authentication. And so. Down here, uh, we can see a bit of usage on it, 
And if we look deeper here, we can also um, see how it is actually implemented. Uh, this does depend on Bcrypt Ruby, so uh, we will add that in a moment. We generate this password here, and it's just a standard model. Uh, and if we look at the uh, db migrate users, um, uh, I must have not specified ah uh, we can in order to do this shortcut here which is actually unique just like that DB migrate. There we are. So, as you can see, uh, when I pass the correct option, it'll automatically create the index for me, <coughs> which I could have certainly added, but I wanted to show you that shortcut. All right. Uh, now let's uh, rate DB migrate, and let's start creating this form here. In order to do that, let's uh, go to the controller. App controllers users user equals user dot new. This is all standard um, <coughs> Rails CRUD stuff, so I'm going to go kind of quick through this. Here's our <coughs> users view. User new. Or user do All right, to show you we got the form there, uh, and it works. There we are, user email. Now, I'm going to add two more attributes here. instead of email it's going to be password and <clears throat> we're also going to add a password confirmation so that users always get it right and they're not surprised now when we reload this page, we're going to get an error, undefined method password. That's because uh, we need to go into app models user <coughs> and add that method has secure password. Once we do that, it knows what to do with those attributes. Ah, except, uh, as I mentioned, we need to add bcrypt ruby. This will tell you that it is not installed. Uh, so if we open up our gem file, and we go down, uh, we can see that it's actually already ready to go for us. We just have to uncomment it and run bundle. Okay, now we have it installed. If we reload again, it's still not going to work because we need to restart our server. You need to do that pretty much anytime you add a new gem. 
Okay. <clears throat> That's ready to go. Uh, and so if we submit this, and we start typing our password, and it's public for the rest of the world to see. Let's fix that. <clears throat> Instead of uh, text field, we want password. are. We load the page, a at b dot c, and when we submit that, we can see that it submitted back up to the server uh, user pa and user password and user password confirmation. Now we just need to create our user. Um, in the controller. Write the code we want to use. Just redirect them back to the root, else uh, render the new there. And this will not work without Password confirmation. Okay, so now we're going to redirect back to our root URL. And so on our root URL, just for fun, let's do a U unordered list here and do at, uh, users all. So now we'll be able to see all of our users uh, just on the index. Uh, completely hypothetical situation here. All right, so uh, now that we've done that, let's see if it all works. We're going to resubmit with the same parameters. And, uh, oh, we'll typo. And now we have our user here. <clears throat> Great, now we want this user to be able to log in. Uh, so let's uh, go about that process. We've just created our user. Uh, and to show you that we've created our user, let's open up a console here. And u equals user, user.last. And there's our user, and you can see that bcrypt and rails filled in our password digest which is a, a one-way hash of essentially a one-way hash of of our password so that 
whenever we run our password again through here, we'll always get this hash, but we never store the raw password in the database. Perfect. So now, uh, in order to get our user to sign in, we need a session controller. just need a new here. We'll need a couple other methods on there or actions on there but um, we will specify them as we go. So I am creating a resource here for sessions only. We only need the create uh, session there. Uh, then we need a uh, login to sessions new. We are just doing a regular get request for destroy rather than delete here uh, because we're not changing anything really. We're just signing someone out and we'll, this will let us go to the URL and, and run that as well. All right. So if we run great routes, we see all of our our new routes in there. Uh, let's add a path. A, um, let's add a link onto our index page. Link to sign in, and that's going to be new session path. specifically for login path. <clears throat> now we have our form here. Uh, now we need the standard items to log in to a site with namely our username which will be our email and our uh, password. So let's uh, view that page. Sessions and new. All right. Yep, we're there. All right. So this will probably be one of your first usages of form tag. Uh, and we're not going to uh, we don't have a model behind this, so we're just going to use the low-level helper and we submit to session path do uh, label so inside of a uh, form tag we use the uh, all of the tag methods and so we're going to pass um, email or email we're going to capitalize it there Word. Okay. 
except again we want password field tag login all right now we have our sign in form and when we enter our password here it submits um, to sessions and it submits with email and password uh, not prefixed by any key okay so that means we need to look at the controller app views uh, or app controllers and sessions controller def create okay so in here we need to find the user if the user exists okay so uh, this will find our user uh, and then we need to uh, do something with that user if if user uh, we're going to specify two two requirements for this if statement to execute first off we want to know if a user was found if the user was not found we don't want to do this Now, why am I using the authenticate method? Uh, have secure password. It adds, that has secure password adds this authenticate method. <clears throat> so we're gonna pass this and do params password. So, this will return rails c user dot so we're going to do uh, user dot find by email this will return one user and we're going to search for by a at b dot c and you can see that it brought back our user. If we search for something that doesn't exist, it's going to return nil, which will uh, then fail at the next if statement. Uh, so we, now that we have a user here, u dot indicate, and if we type in password, we get if we spell authenticate correctly, we get back the user we pass in the wrong password we get false so that's what we'll use to verify our user so if the user is signed in there then we need to sign in the user Else, we need to enter new, but also uh, flash dot now. The reason we're doing now is because we're not redirecting. Alert valid user. So how do we sign this user in? 
Well, that's not too difficult actually. We just do session. Remember the session hash? So now we're going to redirect back to the root URL. And this line here signs our user in. We are just going to store the user's um, primary key in a user ID field in the session. Alright, let's give this a go and see what happens. And it signed us back in, but we don't have our uh, flashes rendering, so let's fix that. App, views, layouts, application. and alert and when we refresh the page you are now a user um, comes up um, and oh I and we also probably should do um, that was from a previous <coughs> it removes it after you see it which is why it still showed up even though I passed one redirect <coughs> and now uh, we want to also do flash notice you are signed in okay well we're signed in um, let's also now that we can sign in let's create a sign out in order to sign out, we need a link. So let's go back to our welcome index. Link to sign out. And when we click this, it's going to say unknown action. Let's uh, make that work. Let's go back to our sessions controller. Destroy. <clears throat> and we're going to do um, um, session user ID equals nil. go to wherever you want refresh now we can sign out but our user interface is not too helpful here because we see sign in and sign out and register all at the same time we really only need to see at most two of these at once uh, so in order to do uh, do that we need to add a helper for us now, if you'll notice that the sessions controller and all controllers inherit from application controller. So if we look under app and controllers, we'll find the application controller. In here, we're going to add some helper methods. And we're going to make them private so they're not actually actions on each of our controllers because each controller will inherit from this. Current user. And I'm going to do this simply first and then show you a, um, a uh, more efficient way in a moment. User find by ID. And then we're going to do uh, session user ID. We're only going to do that if session dot user ID session. Mm. 
if the user ID exists there. So now that we have this current user method, uh, let's try and use it. So in the session here, or in the index page, let's, uh, let's figure out what we actually want to do. We want to, if current user dot present, So if we have a current user, we want them to be able to sign out. If we have no current user, we want them to be able to either register or sign in. Also, up here if we have a current user, we might want to be nice and say welcome. Excited that they're there. There we go. So <clears throat> we could do the same thing down there. Okay. And that's a little long, but oh, uh oh, we have an error. What what what's this undefined variable or method current user? current user and you say but I thought we defined that up here well this will make it available in all controllers to make it available in the view we need to put it right there now since we're not signed in we can either register or sign in let's sign in Yay, now we're, we're signed in, uh, we see the welcome message, and we can sign out. Perfect. Well, uh, now we have a couple of, um, that, that right there is pretty much all that is required for authentication. Um, now that we have this, we're going to refine it a little bit and uh, get past some of the uh, possible issues that might come up. The first most important thing to do uh, are um, dealing with inconsistencies in the way users put in pass or, or user their their email address. Um, people fat finger stuff all the time. People um, capitalize their emails in weird ways. So we want to we want to make that consistent because uh, if we go to sign in here and we do. A at B at C, enter the right password, and it's going to tell us invalid password or email or password. In this case, it's the email. It couldn't find the user. So, what do we do about that? Well, we go to App Controllers Sessions, and right up here, when we're looking for the email, let's do down case. Um, when we do down case, it will always force it to uh, lowercase password. And now it lets us sign in. Uh, this gets us past half the problem. Uh, the other half the problem is when people actually create their email addresses. In order to fix that, um, say for instance, um, sign out. Okay. Oh, nope. Let's uh, register a new user. Now let's do um, yelling at gmail.com password uh, and password. Okay, so now we have a user here, and we can see their email there. Um, now, uh, if we want to uh, sign in as that user, or let's do it like we did before, in at gmail. .com. 
invalid password. What gives? Well, turns out as we saw over here, it's in there with all caps. So of course it can't find it. So we need to go to our model and do a couple things here. Def email equals value value equals value dot down uh, strip dot down case and then a low level method to so we can override the email method value now when we register it dropped its case down to uh, that that way we'll always have a consistent value between the two when they're signing in and when they are registering their e email address um, same thing will work um, if we did a bunch of spaces at gmail.com and a bunch of spaces on the end, password, and oh, we're supposed to be signing in. Here's new space gmail.com. in there and password and you can see it shrunk all those down um, we could of course see that here no spaces in the email perfect okay so inconsistency number one has been fixed um, making sure that the emails are consistent uh, another thing that we need to add here is validate email now we have a unique email here okay um, okay, but that's a relatively minor thing. Um, the next inconsistency that we need to do is when we register a new user, it'd be great if they were signed in immediately. So we have our form all ready to test there. This is pretty easy to do as well. Um, let's go to our our um, users controller and when we uh, create a new user now we can do um, the same thing we did before session user ID equals user ID and that will sign us in create a new user oh Let's see if it'll still let us complete it. Oh, had the error there, so let's let's do foo two. It actually did create the user. Okay, now we have foo and foo bar or at bar.com and we are already signed in. But there is some duplication here. So let's write the code that we want to have. Let's get rid of that. And let's do um, sign in user. Now, when we go, now we need to uh, create that sign in method. We'll do that in the controller here, uh, the application controller. So if we do def sign in user, and then uh, if we just paste, um, not paste, but 
session user ID equals user dot ID if user dot present uh, and then we can also do the same thing for sign out. Just uh, our for session, and let's take this line and change it to sign out. And we just create that there. Uh, now we have a little bit less uh, duplication. And let's try it. Sign out works, sign in. Uh, foo at bar.com. And yes, we're signed in. Great. Uh, and, um, okay, the last thing let's clean up here. Um, before we uh, close this one out and move on to authentication is let's uh, look at our um, application layout again uh, along with our index we want this stuff right here to be present on all of the pages so let's go ahead and delete that and move it up to here. Actually, let's move it up to here. Let's do it at the very top. So now uh, we don't have to render that on every single page. Perfect. Well, that's the uh, that's the basics for authentication. Uh, feel free to start the next screencast on authorization. Uh, the problem with our current application, uh, before I close it out, is we can get to about, but we can also get to the private dashboard without being signed in. Uh, we'll solve that next.